Welcome back. Let's do a bunch of source transforms. We're given this little circuit right here. With two terminals hanging off, A and B. So the A, B terminals are the terminals of interest. That is, we're going to measure the um, performance or the behavior, observe the behavior of the circuit at these two terminals. And um, we want to find, in this case, the Norton equivalent. And let's go ahead and find the Thevenin equivalent while we're at it. All right, so remember the Norton equivalent, it, I think I can squeeze it in here, I didn't leave myself much room, much room, but the Norton equivalent is a current source in parallel with a resistor. Okay, so it's possible to make um, a circuit consisting of just these two devices that will behave um, the same as this larger circuit here. And it's also possible to make the Thevenin equivalent, which is a voltage source in series with a resistor. Okay, a voltage source and a current source. Uh, so the Norton equivalent has a current source in parallel with the resistor and the Thevenin equivalent has a voltage source in series with the resistor. And both of these circuits can be made uh, to have the same behavior as a more complicated circuit with respect to two particular terminals. In this case, we chose, uh, you know, the terminals kind of coming off of this resistor over here. All right? So generally speaking, you can choose any two terminals, and from those terminals, you could construct an equivalent, uh, a Norton equivalent or a Thevenin equivalent that behaves the same from those two terminals. So here we've just chosen these two terminals and we want to know what the Th Norton equivalent will look like um, from, uh, with respect to those two terminals. So we have a 15 amp current source and then all these, uh, these guys, an eight ohm resistor, two ohm resistor, 12 ohm resistor, 10 ohm resistor, resistor. And we're just going to do a bunch of source transforms to get this Norton equivalent. And then we'll do one final source tor transform and get the Thevenin equivalent. So this is given, all of this stuff right here is given, okay? And we're gonna find the Norton equivalent and the Thevenin equivalent. All right, so the first source transform we could do is these two guys, all right? So we're gonna source transform. We're gonna do this, this guy, I'll just label it right Right here, source transform A. We have a uh, voltage source in, no, I'm sorry, I misspoke. We have a current source in parallel with a resistor. So to transform that, we simply turn the um, current source into a voltage source. And you put the polarity, the, must, the plus minus polarity uh, corresponding to the arrow direction. So you put the positive terminal at the arrowhead, basically. Okay, so what we do is we simply move the eight ohm resistor to from parallel to series. We just move it. And then using Ohm's law, so Ohm's law is, uh, anybody remember Ohm's law? Ohm's law is V equals IR, so this new source is gonna be um, 15 amps times eight ohms. It's going to be 120 volts. So that's what that's what this new uh, voltage source is going to be. All right. So that's the transform. We just moved a um, we just moved the eight ohm resistor from parallel to to series, and then we replaced the current source with a voltage source, and the um, we solved for the new the new voltage using Ohm's law. And that's it. Okay, now we'll draw the rest of the circuit. So it's a little bit, you gotta be a little bit careful here on where you define the uh, boundaries of, this, of the transform. And uh, I could draw some dotted lines around here perhaps to show that, so, so uh, you know, sort of a node, I could kinda add a node-ish kinda thingy there. But anyway, the rest of this stuff just stays the same is what I'm trying to say.
12 ohm stays here, the 2 ohm stays here, the 10 ohm stays here. Okay, that's the first transform. Then at this point we can we can do some more simplifications, like um, these two guys are in series, the 8 and the 2, so we could replace that with a with a uh, 10, but what, what we're interested in is how this does this circuit behave with respect to terminals A, B. So this is really A here also and B here. So between A, B, okay, between A, B on this side, you have three resistors. You have the 10, the 8, and the 2. And, you know, as far as A, B is concerned, it doesn't really matter, you know, where in this loop these guys are, right? This is just one loop going around here. You know, the 10 could be, you know, we could, the 10 could be over here. We could flip the arrangement of all four of these devices on this loop, and it, and it doesn't matter because they're in series. As far as the net effect from A to B, it's the same. So we can, basically, we can just add the 10, um, the 10 plus the 8 plus the 2, and we get 20. And we can draw this guy like this. We can just put a 20 ohm resistor in here. All right? So we're doing source transforms, but we're also talking about more generally about circuits and their nature. And okay, so at this point we could do another transform. We could take we could take this stuff. Right, we have a uh, voltage source in series with a resistor. We could replace that with a current source in parallel with a resistor. So we're going backwards, like this, the reverse transform of what we did up here. So here we're just going to move the 20 ohm, and then we're going to solve for I. I is V over R. It's going to be 120 over 20, which last time I checked was 6. So this is 6 amps. And at this point, the rest of the circuit's still hanging out there, doing the same thing. Okay, now we have these two guys which we can combine, so 20, 20 in parallel with 12 is going to be 7.5. So the final circuit, which is the Norton equivalent we are seeking, is going to be this guy. All right, so this is the Norton equivalent, named after a guy named Norton, who was I'm assuming a buddy of a guy named Thevenin. So we've generated the Norton equivalent, which is a uh, current source in parallel with the resistor. And from terminals A, B, this guy will behave the same as this much more complicated circuit. But we can go one more transform and go ahead and turn this Norton into a Thevenin just by replacing the, uh, the uh, current source of the voltage source and moving the resistor and then using Ohm's law uh, so V equals I R it's going to equal 6 amps and 7, 7 point, 6 times 7.5 6 amps and 7.5 ohms is going to give you 45 volts so that's this guy over here All right so this is V sub thevenin and R sub thevenin this is I sub Thevenin and R, I, um, R sub, I'm sorry, I sub Norton, I sub Norton and R sub Norton. Both of these circuits will behave the same with respect to terminals AB. The Thevenin equivalent is a little more common. Um, this is, um, once again, the Thevenin equivalent is a very powerful thing because it allows us to simulate a very complicated circuit, much more complicated than this in theory. We, that is, we could use circuits that are much more complicated than this. And uh, that allows us to use a simple model, and uh, then we could do further analysis on the, on the system without it getting out of hand. But the Thevenin equivalent is a little more common because, well, how to say this, we live in a sort of a voltage-centric world, I guess. Um, like, most devices are uh, kind of designed and analyze from a constant voltage point of view. Like, take a, your car, for example, it's considered to have a 12-volt system. That is, we, we have a 12-volt battery, and we assume that that, uh, that is, we model that as a 
ideal voltage source that that is we uh, model it as if the 12 volt battery is always 12 volts now in reality it isn't but we just kind of model it that way to make things simpler and there's batteries all around you know 1.5 volt batteries and uh, you know uh, 5 volt batteries and all kinds of different size batteries and also like the power supply to your house is is looked at in terms of voltages there's a 120 volt circuit and there's a 220 volt circuit okay so most of the circuits and and devices in in the modern world are kind of looked at as voltage centric and that means they can be modeled with these uh, Thevenin and equivalents all right but there's also a Norton equivalent um, I guess academically the the difference between these two is this is this is the a case of, of using a source transform to go, we can use a source transform to go back and forth between a Norton and a Thevenin equivalent. Anyway, there you go. Hope that was useful to you. See you next time.